Hi everyone. My name is Johan Jonsson. I'm user Julle and mainly active on Swedish Wikipedia. And I will talk about images and a neutral point of view and how they work together and sometimes don't. It will be a fairly short presentation. In case you have questions, comments, there should be ample time for that. So, a few years ago, I was back in my hometown visiting my parents. And me and a friend took a walk around the area where we grew up and passed by the school. And my parents had a really old, crappy digital camera that was bad even in the early 2000s when they got it. But the images were good enough for commons, I thought. So I ended up illustrating the area where I grew up, including my old school. I know this school very well. I went to classes 6 to 12. And I actually quite liked it, though it's not obvious from the picture. <laughs> this is a terrible, terrible, terrible picture, because there are so many things that will send you a specific mes message. The skies are gray. It's very overcast. It's in the middle of the summer, so it's completely deserted. All the windows are dark. You can see nothing but asphalt, which would be OK if there, was, there, there were, was nothing but asphalt around this school. However, there's plenty of grass. You just can't see it from this angle. And there's some sort of barrier towards the bottom of the picture, just to give you the feeling that you're being shut in. So obviously, this image contains a message beyond just this is how the school looks. It says something about boredom. It says something about this being a bad place. That's not necessarily true. It was an OK school. But it amused me, so I, I had to put it on uh, Switch Wikipedia to see how long it would stay. And that was a while ago, because it's been here since 2009. And I've been using this picture regularly as an illustration of the problem with images and a new point of view. And people always nod and they agree that yes, perhaps this is not a very good picture, perhaps it sends the wrong message. And then they never remove it, because it's not important enough. And the point I will be trying to make here is that we don't take neutrality and images seriously. We will absolutely agree that, yes, sure, it exists. There is a message here beyond the information that can be contained about how this looks. But we rarely take action based on acknowledging this. And we often say, any picture is better than no picture, which I would argue is not the case. For example, this is an old version of the Swedish poet Mohamed Omar, who does a lot of things, um, mainly writing poetry and getting stuck in different uh, political corners. And this was during his Islamist period. And for a long, long time, this was the image that illustrated this article. And it's a terrible picture. And it's a very good example of when no picture perhaps is better than a certain picture. Sure, 
get an idea of how it looks. It works that way. But it also contains more information than that. It looks really angry. It's a bad picture. So it also portrays him in a negative light in several ways. And I remember after Anders Bering Breivik, the Norwegian terrorist who uh, bombed uh, the part Norwegian government department and then shot a lot of people at Utøya, was discussed. He had himself made sure that there was an image that was available. And a lot of people were fairly upset about this because it was the only image available. So he had managed to choose the way he could portray himself. And this is, of course, not neutral. And a lot of people agreed with this and thought that, yes, no, no, we can't portray a terrorist like this. However, a solution that a lot of people suggested was to show him as he was being forced into a police car or something like that, rather than just neutrally conveying how he looks, because they were really anxious to show him in that image, that image of him, which is yet again not neutral, understandable, but we didn't really agree to let the text speak for itself without combinations, without letting people come to their own conclusion that, yeah, shooting almost 100 kids is a bad thing. But this is also true when there is no particular problem with the individual image. For a long time, this was how the Swedish Wikipedia article on Beijing looked like. And as you could see at the top, it was actually one modern photo. But if we scroll down, all the other images are in black and white. And that modern photo is of an ancient building which means that there was absolutely nothing that portrayed more than Beijing. So when you go to this article and you read through it and you look at the images, there is nothing that says this is a modern city. And in a Western country that has certain ideas about China, this is problematic because it plays into stereotype that the East is far behind. And it remained this way until 2012, when I edited it. And I would argue that this, this mix of old and new makes a lot more sense. Because you can have the old, but you'd also be able to portray the fact that, yeah, it is a modern city. Because images can be positive or negative, just like statements. And there is another example, another problem here, which is that we often conflate beauty with encyclopedic value. We like pretty images. We really like pretty images. It's very apparent if you look at the picture of the year at Commons. Sure, they have encyclopedic value, or they wouldn't be on Commons. But we rarely vote for the image with the most encyclopedic value. We vote for an image that has some encyclopedic value and also is beautiful. And part of this problem is that we treat images differently than we do articles. 
because an article is something we come together and create together. And often some person starts it, or is definitely the main contributor, but usually it doesn't stay like that. So it's more, I contributed to that article rather than this is my article. But this is not the case with images. A photo belongs to the photographer. And this is true also in the Wikimedia world. And when a photo belongs to the photographer, there's pride involved. And we want the pretty things, because those are what people like. And this means that we're always pushing for the best pictures, in the sense of the most beautiful pictures. But the most beautiful pictures are not necessarily representative. We would never do this with text. We would never push for the most beautiful way to convey the city, because that would give you a false impression. And you also have the problem with images that you have the one example. Wikipedia, especially, is all about getting different views together. And we have problems as soon as we have to specify one thing. But a photo is very much the one example. If you want to read more about this, this is a good next step. This is the seminal work on the rhetoric of images. We started a bit late, and I have, because of scheduling issues, um, another presentation very, very soon in the same block. And I wanted to save some time for discussion, so I've shortened down my presentation a bit. So, do you have any comments or questions or arguments against this? I see several hands in there. I think the first one was over there. Hi, I completely agree with your point, but you know, sometimes, you know, with, for instance, with images of people, we are often constrained by the uh, non-free content rules, you know, we're the only, <clears throat> I don't know about that picture of Muhammad Omar, but that, for all we know, may have been the only free image available for a long time. And, uh, you know, I remember quite a few arguments in the past over, you know, should we just get rid of an image altogether or use this one because it's free? And, well, one of the five pillars of Wikipedia is promoting free content. Yeah, and then we get back, of course, to the argument that any picture is better than no picture, which is how this is usually um, defended within the movement that writes, we have no good e picture, no really informative picture, let's go with this one instead, because it, it's at least something. But we would never do that with text. We wouldn't say, so sure, this is non-neutral, but it's better than something. And I think that if we wouldn't do it with information in text, we shouldn't do it with information in images either. Hey, um, I'm Sebastian, photographer. Um, I make a living taking photos. Um, that's maybe another layer to add to your presentation, because if I'm being hired, I leave it up to the Wikipedians to decide to um, decide which photos end up on comments and which not. But neutral point of view might be some of the, might be a thing to keep in mind with that too. On the other hand, I think you're looking for too much information in a picture. If you go back to the photo of the school, the things I get out of it, if I see it in an article, it's, it's a building that's yellow and there's a playground. We don't judge text on Wikipedia if it's written poetic. So, you can look at the photo in different ways. You can also look at the photo, what facts it gives you and not what emotions it gives you. And as the third thing, should we all switch to 360 photos um, and not take photos from one angle anymore? Would that be more neutral for, to you? 
I think it would be more neutral, because being able to walk around to, to guide your own view of something would definitely mean that you will not be able to pick the one perfect angle that would show something in a specific light. I, I would disagree that this doesn't contain as much information that I say it would. I, we can't really defend ourselves against the uh, impressions we get from a photograph. Um, it's not always obvious to us how something uh, will affect us. And when I describe this, what information do I get? I would not say this is a boring school. I would say it's a yellow building. However, that impression will stay with me. Uh, hello, my name is Peter Isatolo. I'm an editor from Sweden, and I would very much agree that in many cases, no image is better. Uh, is the better uh, choice, especially if we're talking about depictions of, of people. Um, it's always a, debating, a debatable question whether you should have like a, an awkward image of someone. You know, that's, you could, that's, a, that's from case to case, but there is a very important uh, exception to this, and that, that is the um, photos of women and or illustrations of where women's bodies are for some reason depicted. For example, in the article about bra, the article bra on English Wikipedia, which I and several other editors try, cleaned it up because quite frankly, they, it was full of sexist crap and you know, glamour shots and just you know, boob images. And I think in those cases, there, it's the, the argument is definitely that we should remove some images and maybe you know, cut down on the amount. We don't need glamour shots. We don't need boob shots in, in an article about underwear. Hello, my name is uh, MB1 or Matti. Uh, I'm on. Uh, I do photos on comments, and I also edit German Wikipedia and a few other. Um, I I would also like to challenge your your statement that no image can be better than any image or like a certain image. Um, I know it's it's not always true, but uh, if I see a, a bad image like the one of the the poet. For me, that's a call to action, and I think, okay, this photo is really bad. We should get a better one. The same is true for text, and it's much easier for text, of course. If the text in Wikipedia is bad, it's a call to action. I need to change that to make it better, and it's not always that easy to do that for, uh, to a photo, especially if it's a photo of someone uh, who is dead or an object that doesn't exist anymore. But for many, many objects that's not, or people, that's not the case, and we can make a better image. And I think it's, it's really good to have this negative example so we can, uh, so we are challenged to, to produce better content. So my argument was cut rather short because we started late and I have to run away to my other presentation. Um, but I would liken the image that is non-perfect to an article which contains non-neutral information, a lot of non-neutral information, but we cannot remove a, the small non-neutral part. So keeping a non-neutral image is kind of like keeping an article where our, opinion, our options are keep the article as it is, even though it is obviously meant to sell this product, for example. Take the obvious one. Hello, I'm Bahur from Estonia, also been a photographer and currently dealing mostly with historic photographs, but I didn't get what was your like positive program or what do you, do you suggest? Because I totally agree, as you also pointed out, that uh, photos and text are very different nature. 
texts can be edited collaboratively. We can uh, correct the register or the, the uh, un allocation, uh, associations, etc. We can do it uh, together, but the picture is always the one. one. Somebody does it, and that's it. And I mean, what, what could you show a good example of a neutral image? Because I would like to also cite uh, two other famous theoreticians about uh, pictures. For instance, Susan Sontag says that to photograph is to confer importance. There is probably no subject that cannot be beautified. Moreover, there is no way to suppress <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the tendency inherent in all photographs to accord value to their subjects. So basically, everything, if we take a picture, we think something is valuable. The, what we take a picture of is valuable. And another one by Tom Mitchell, photographs are mostly the outcomes of human attention directly paid to scenes and of explicit intention to record. But many digital images are not. So actually, if we are talking about neutral imagery, this is really surveillance cameras maybe, because as, as Mitchell continues, we can meaningfully ask what such an image tells us a mixture made by, by an image. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, te technical image, for example, but not what, it, what its originator was trying to tell us. Yeah, that's a very good argument. Um, and of course, the photograph is in itself uh, part of this, the one example problem that you will have a snapshot of something that has a lot of facets, but you can only give it, show it from one angle, or perhaps three if you have three different images. But I would argue that there are circles in hell, that there are m more or less obvious um, choices where you will convey an image that will fall astray from what we try to do. For example, when we, we talk about the difference between texts and photos, and we talk about beautiful pictures, of course, and, and, and that the fact that a beautiful picture, or a terrible picture, has an emotional res gives an emotional response in us that we can't really defend ourselves against. And this can be done with text as well. But we don't do it. Because the way to do it is to use alliterations, rhymes, poetry, all the things that we make very sure to remove from our texts. And in the same way, I think that we should struggle to remove those aspects from our images. But it's the same thing as neutral point of view. We cannot have a perfect neutral point of view in our articles, images or not. And we know this but we still strive for it. Now, I'm Ivo Krusomegi from Estonia, and I also have that kind of question, sort of relating to the last one, like how do you educate the community? In the sense that often, actually, the photographers sort of understand what their image is, what kind of emotions those things may carry, etc. But uh, I see often that the problem is even greater when we talk about uh, those Wikipedians that are mainly ac active in text. Because, for instance, I have had some uh, sort of long discussions with some people who, for instance, uh, don't like me from removing some images or adding some other ones instead of saying, they're saying like, let's say there's an image about one person that's like really ugly image, but saying like, oh, but there is uh, no other image when this person was, let's say, somewhere around 20 years old. And therefore, it definitely has to be inside, even though the image itself is so bad. I mean, I have had people who have written to me that, please, can you do something, or written to Wikipedia, please, can you do something? This image is just horrible. And I also see that this is definitely a problem. And how do you think, how could we educate the general community about, like, uh, what is a good image and uh, what's the value of them? I'm trying to do my part right now. Now, I would argue that what we need to do is we need to talk more about this. We need to make sure that we're aware and we need to have it as a natural part of our conversations. And we don't have that at the moment. 
not to the same degree as we have with text, but the more images we get, the more important it will become. I think we have time for one last very short question, so please keep it short. Uh, my name is Thomas. Uh, in uh, Wikipedia, Duschgeldrache 2. Uh, and uh, I'm from Germany. In Germany, we have a photo project called Festival Sommer. And uh, we make uh, good quality and free usable uh, photos on uh, festivals and concerts uh, from uh, musicians. So, uh, many of those uh, uh, photos uh, show the musicians in, uh, yeah, strange costumes or in a glamorous way, but that's the way uh, they are acting on the stages. That's uh, the way uh, of, of, of their profession. The photos uh, show the musicians in their profession. Uh, uh, maybe that's not uh, neutral, but uh, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, that's a good point. I would argue that <clears throat> it is, it makes a lot of sense to have those images as well, because what we write about is people in the public space. We write about them as individuals, as persons, but not when they are at home. We tend to ignore that piece of information. It is short. Uh, paragraph at the end, perhaps, with uh, marriage and children and maybe mentions hobby or something like that. But our focus for a musician or a, an actor is what they do on the stage. So while that image is not neutral, and while it would be great if we could have additional images uh, in a different setting, um, I would see that as less problematic, personally. Uh, it is 11 a.m. Another speaker will have to take the stage. I will have to run. I had to shorten this pretty much on the fly. So I thank you for asking so great questions and coming up with so great arguments so I, can, so I could make many of the arguments I wanted to make but didn't have time for. Thanks.